Hi, welcome to the IT Service Management Mentor. Today I'm going to be talking about building a SIAM function. And this is based on my experience of actually doing this in the real world. I'm going to cover a few areas. I'm going to talk about the ecosystem, the models and the structures, the roadmap to actually make it happen, and then some onboarding stuff for service providers. Do subscribe to my channel and do hang around and listen to this because this is first-hand practical experience of SIAM. So first off, the SIAM ecosystem. There's three elements to it. You've got the customer, and they will typically have retained capabilities, the service integrator, and then the service provider level. Usually there are multiple service providers. So if we look at the customer layer, first of all, so the customer would typically hang on to a number of areas. Those are known as retained capabilities. My experience, it's been governance, oversight, business engagement type activities, enterprise architecture in, in particular, but anything architecture wise, anything strategic procurement. I've seen a mixture of two. I, I've seen it at the service integrator layer and the customer layer. Certainly enterprise risk is, a, is an enterprise um, activity and the customer would want to hang on to that. And then I think contract management, CM wise. Service integrator layer. So this is the end to end service governance part. It's about the collaboration. Key functions such as delivery, management, coordination, getting all those service providers to work together nicely, to play together nicely, to collaborate. This is an orchestration type activity. You're coordinating lots of different teams, cross-functional um, organisations and uh, uh, the landscape overall, the ecosystem. Then the service providers, you will normally have a combination of internal and external service providers. And that could be anything from end user compute, end user compute cloud, desktop services, uh, workplace services, support, maintenance, application support, perhaps application development and infrastructure activities. They're each service provider is responsible for managing their own product and their own service provider, uh, um, their offering. But clearly the service integrator is about trying to get that to work as an end to end activity. Preferred term here is service provider, by the way. You'll quite often hear people talk about third parties, suppliers, vendors, etc. In Siam circles, service provider is, is the preferred term. And each one of those service providers will have their own processes and procedures and tooling and so on and so forth. And the secret to the service integrator here is one of integrating and orchestrating all of those different elements together to provide value to the customer. So let's talk about the different types of models. So we've got an inter so straight down the middle of this slide, we've got internal, external, hybrid and lead supplier. An internal model looks like you've got the customer at the top and the retained capabilities that we talked about a minute ago, but also they are the service integrator. So they are managing the service provider external um, services and the internal service provider services. An external model, you have the customer with the retained capabilities. Then you have an independent service integrator. Their role is about orchestrating, coordinating, collaborating the ecosystem with all of those service providers, both internal and, and external. Hybrid model, so as you might imagine, it's a combination of the two. It's a combination of an internal and an external. So what you have is your customer at the top with retained capability, then a separate function, the service integration model. But if you scratch that, it's a combination of the external model and the customer themselves. I've certainly seen this in environments where a customer wants to have the capability to be a service integrator, but just needs maybe for 12 or 18 months, somebody to hold their hand. So a proper service integrator, if you like, an external service integrator to come in and hold their hands and show them the ropes as to how, how this, is, this is completed. And then the lead supplier. So in this model, you have the customer with the retained capability, service integrator layer, 
And then the service provider layer, one of those service providers is actually the service integrator as well. So you have a supplier, a lead supplier, service provider, that is not only a service provider, they are a service integrator. Really important to just double check that they really do have that service integration capability. Okay, great. Then how do you do it? So how do you make it happen? You need to follow four steps, discovery and strategy, plan and build, implement, run and improve. And following this roadmap, each phase has a number of objectives, triggers, inputs, activities and, and outputs. And each one of those will help you go from your discovery and strategy stage right through to your run and it improve stage. So very quickly, discovery and strategy stage. This is defining objectives, mapping processes and, and value activities and understanding. It's a due diligence, it's a capability analysis um, activity. So what's the what's the business strategy? What's the driver here? What are, what are they looking to try and achieve? Perhaps um, the customer's challenges is one of complexity. Perhaps it's one of scalability. Maybe it's unclear who's actually doing what. This is where Racy Matrixes always come in as, as really handy tools to find out who's responsible for something, who's accountable, who do we need to consult, who do we just need to keep informed. You're mapping the as is, this is what it looks like at the moment. And then you're looking outwards as well in terms of who's available in terms of service providers and service integrator capabilities. What are the risks? What are the costs? You're exploring, you're reviewing, you're understanding the marketplace. Another really important phase of this activity at Discovery and Strategy is setting your stall out that this is a project. This is a big piece of work. It's not a, oh, and do it in the background while you're doing everything else. No, this is a project. It needs resources, it needs funding, it needs time and effort. It provides the, the governance framework and you, you've got a, a good as is, what is the state of the nation? That then allows you to start on the business case, the, the outline case. Plan and build. So you're now starting to look at the detailed SIAM model, the service integration and management model, which is the best model for this particular customer that you're looking at. Is it internal? Is it external? Is it hybrid? Is it lead supplier? You're considering OCM, organizational change management, really important. Can't, I cannot overemphasize how important this is. People aren't always open to change. So there are various models, ADCAR model here in particular, which is very useful in terms of raising awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. You start to appoint service providers. You're planning for the transition. You're planning for retirement of some service providers that are just surplus to requirement. Real world example, watch out for shadow IT here. So you, when you go into a customer, you may well find there are departments that are non-IT departments that are working with service providers and delivering IT services directly to that, that business function outside of the governance that IT would provide. Implementation, okay, so this is where it starts to happen. Are you gonna go for a big bang or are you gonna go for a saved, uh, for a phased iterative approach? There are pros and cons, and there's reasons as to why you might do a big bang approach. Perhaps there's an urgency element to it that it needs to be done within X period of time. Or perhaps um, the, the business just accepts, yes, we know there's going to be some short-term pain here. We're just going to do it and get it all over and done with. Or is it going to be a phased approach in terms of okay maybe we want to do this gently we'll do it by country we'll do it by region by county by whatever it may be by department i've certainly been involved in delivering sign by department but clearly a phased approach was going to take longer as opposed to a, a big bang you can argue phased approach is less disruptive than a big bang true so the implementation, it's the transitioning, you're now doing the organisational change management, you're introducing, you're onboarding service providers. I'll have a slide um, in a couple of uh, minutes that will talk about um, real world 
checklists that I do when I onboard new service providers. Perhaps you need to retire or perhaps there's some consolidation activities in there of service providers as well. Make sure all the risks are known and that you've planned those and you've managed those. You've got mitigation activities. Perhaps there's a level of acceptance to some of those risks. Perhaps there's some avoidance transferring that risk elsewhere. And then consider any employment type regulations with staff transfers um, to uh, Tupi, for example. Then when you get to the run improve, this is keeping the lights on. This is your day to day operations, keeping everything running, fine tuning, looking at ways you can improve things with continual improvement. Make sure you've got a register of activities. Make sure that uh, service providers are working towards improving the ecosystem. Really important point around collaboration with service providers. A service integrator has to demonstrate that it's fair, that it's impartial. Now, if you think back to one of those models earlier, when there's an internal service integrator, it's not unusual for there, a fee for there to be a bit of a feeling as to any service providers that are internal perhaps get a better and a more lenient approach than those service providers that are external. I've certainly seen that in practice. The importance there is it has service integrator must demonstrate it's fair and that it's impartial and that everybody is working collaborative, collaboratively. Structural elements think at every level: strategic, ta tactical, and operational. The structural elements um, should be considered around working groups, forums, governance boards. Maybe that's a change advisory board or an infosec board or business continuity or a program board of some kind. Also reporting on performance and the value. I do have another slide um, and presentation deck around how do you demonstrate to a customer that you are in your SIAM function delivering value. So, so do subscribe to my channel and, and search for that. And then what are the outcomes? Are there KPIs? Are there key KPIs that you can demonstrate that value? Final slide here is around bringing new service providers into ecosystems. And this is first-hand experience. The red um, item that I, I've highlighted here, really key point here about onboarding service providers is they have to understand the customer's business goals. Don't just bring service providers into the ecosystem without going through a number of these items I've got on the screen here, but certainly they need to understand what are the business goals. Bringing a new service provider into an ecosystem, you need to be setting expectations. You should be having workshops to share customer drivers, values, visions, directions, strategy, what the goals are of, of the business. I'll re-emphasize service providers must understand the business goals of the customer. You can have virtual and physical meetings, hangouts, maybe social events or calls or, or video activities. Printed, act printed materials and documentations are key here training, overview sessions of the customer's systems and the ecosystem. Important to set some milestones and some objectives here. I quite like to set a, a 30, 60, 90 day um, milestone for service providers. Define those reporting requirements and what the frameworks are. Certainly really important to set the expectations around participation of um, various um, structural elements of the ecosystem. So for example, um, attending CAB or um, making sure that there's true collaboration there, that they're demonstrating end-to-end -end activities. Audit. I like to be able to demonstrate back to a customer, this SIAM model is providing value to you as a business and um, audit is a really good way of just demonstrating that you're delivering collaboration, you're delivering end-to-end -end delivery, you're highlighting any non-compliance, you're taking action, you, you've got plans um, that will improve management and operation and integration. You, you, you can also start to um, look at your service providers to make sure that they are aware of the standardization, the processes, how we're going to be looking at integrating processes and their tooling into the common environment and, and the ecosystem. Risk management, really important to, to make sure that service providers are aware of the risk management elements and highlighting risks and, and demonstrating that they are uh, um, not only raising risks but mitigating them as well. And then feedback, really important 
everybody needs feedback. You need to get that feedback back to your service providers as to what's good and what's not so good. Okay, that's it. Please do subscribe to my channel and click like.